Let us pray. Gracious God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, there's usually a big long explanation of the, the next reading. I have no clue. Um, since I'm the last substitute. But I love it when they have this PowerPoint presentation. It's more meaningful for me when there's an introduction and we kind of put it in perspective. So let's hear the reading from Esther, which is the play that we never did get to see God at um, Sight and Sound. I believe they're still doing it, or they are doing it. So maybe we can get a, a bus trip, a road trip, said. The first reading is from the parts of Esther. King Ahasuerus and Haman went into feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we have been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he, who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose words saved the king, stands at Haman's house, fifty cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all of the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month, Adar, and also the fifteenth day of the same month, year by year, as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into a holiday that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord, thanks be Thank to God. Let us read responsibly from Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side, Then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fire. The snare is broken. And we have escaped. I'm glad that's not long. <laughs> Let's hear Joan read our second reading from James. The second reading is from parts of the fifth chapter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. 
Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's take a vote. Should I read the gospel from here, or should I go to the pulpit and read the gospel like a real organ person? Thank you.
want to go with Miss Megan today. Uh, if you're one of the, the younger ones who's going to sit in back, Miss Megan, Eli's big sister is going to be there for, for nursery today. Or otherwise, you guys can go back with your parents. Thank you for, for helping me dance a little bit. And now I invite you to resume standing as we prepare to hear the gospel today. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is always for us. Amen. Imagine with me for just a moment that you have a job with a, a very specialized skill that, that's part of it. Something that, that you learned that skill through extensive training. Something that maybe you, you learned from a, a teacher who, who is considered the best in the world. After going through that training, you continue working with that person who taught you. You, you see them as your friend, but also your boss. Most of the time, it's actually your boss who does the work, or you're just an apprentice of sorts, maybe a disciple. But every once in a while, occasionally, you get to break out that special skill. You get to do it too, and then when you use that special skill, when, when that thing that you trained so hard for all your life, it makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. For many of you, I, I imagine that this shouldn't be hard to conjure up an idea. Most of you, all of you, have different skills. You, you have God-given gifts, things that, that you put to work in 
jobs that you do or, or the, the tasks that, that you take on. It's hopefully it's not done. that hard yeah. to think about a time where you were specially trained and specifically trained to do the task at hand. I, I hope each of you can conjure up a, a moment where, where you took pride in the work that you did. Now here's the next piece. You're, you're still this skilled person with, with special gifts and talents and, and imagine that one day you're in town and you see someone else doing that thing that you have trained so hard for. Except you know that the person you're seeing didn't go through that, that special training. They, they don't have any of the special certifications or, or licenses that, that you do. Or some of our, our doctors in the congregation or, or others that, that have various licenses or, or certifications that it would kind of be like seeing someone claiming that they can perform medicine without ever going to med school or, or nursing school or, or paramedic class or, or anything like that. It would probably be pretty frustrating. Now, maybe when, when you see this person, they, they claim to work for your, your boss, but you, you know all of your co-workers on a first-name basis. And you don't recognize this other person. Obviously, they're some sort of imposter. Now, Again, depending on what sort of job we're, we're talking about, and this might be more alarming for, for some than others. I, I already mentioned our, our healthcare workers, they, they probably wouldn't want someone dressing up in scrubs and walking into the hospital or, or doctor's office claiming to know what they're talking about. It, it would be an issue similarly if, if someone bought an old school bus and, and started driving routes uh, around town and, and picking up kids. It, it would be an issue if someone claimed that they had the skills and the training to be a tax accountant. I, I pay good money to an, an accountant every year to, to figure out my taxes because I I know I wouldn't be able to handle them on my own. According to the disciples, in today's gospel lesson, it's an issue when, when someone starts going around claiming to have the power to do exorcisms. When that person isn't one of the twelve, in, in today's gospel, the, the disciples are, are concerned, they're worked up, they're, they're afraid and angry and mad because there's someone else who, who is casting out demons in Jesus' name. He's, he's not one of the known disciples and, and clearly, at least in their opinion, he must be an imposter who is breaking that commandment about taking the Lord's name in vain. They're enraged. They're angry. And, and for anyone who, who's ever had kids or, or worked with, with kids, they, they look like your average elementary or middle school cattle tail. They, they run to Jesus telling him uh, about this horrible person who's doing exorcisms and, and is not one of the disciples and they go and tell Jesus expecting him to be so incredibly angry and outraged and Jesus says, don't stop him. And imagine how frustrating that could be as a disciple. 
when you're all worked up uh, about this person claiming to be someone that you think that they are not, and you're, you're so angry. And Jesus says, don't stop. Ignore it. For no one does a deed of power in my name. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. When, when you hear those words, I, I hope that, that it maybe turns the idea of power upside down for you. Yogi Berra was you know, the, the famous baseball player. And, and you know, he, he was known for no-nonsense, common-sense sayings. And, and I, I imagine him saying, if they're not on the other team, they're playing for us. Whether or not the, the disciples accepted what Jesus was saying at that point in time, sooner or later, they had to have realized that he might have been on to something. Even in those earliest days of the church, even when they, they still had Jesus right there with them to, to teach them uh, about the ways of God and faith, there was still a lot of diversity of opinion. There was diversity of practice. And the disciples had to realize that, that while certainly there are some people who are against us, there really are a lot more who are playing on our team. I, I think in what Jesus was saying, he, he was trying to remind the disciples that, that teams are irrelevant when it comes to things like healing the children of God. It, it's not the, the important thing of, of what church you, you belong to, not the, the structures of the church, but, but rather proclaiming the gospel message, sharing the good news of Jesus that died and was resurrected for our sins. A while ago, just last week actually, our, our new bishop in the Allegheny Synod was, was installed in a, a church service in, in Altoona. Bishops' installations are, are normally elaborate, high church, traditional ceremonies with, with hundreds of, of pastors in, in full garb and a handful of visiting bishops wearing their fancy clothes and funny hats, but, but, but our bishops' installation this year was a, a bit more simple. It, it was closed to only invited guests to, to limit the number of attendants out of COVID concerns. It, it was a, a pretty simple service to take the former pastor Paula Schmidt and install her as Bishop Paula Schmidt. The thing is, all of that elaborate pomp and circumstance, all of that fancy church service, the, the parade uh, of pastors processing and recessing, none of that is actually necessary. Because as much as we, we all may love the, the tradition of various parts of the liturgy, and as much as we, we may enjoy 
hear in band make that, that organ sing. That's not what the church is all about. The church is about healing the sick, helping the poor, clothing the homeless, visiting those who were in prison or, or, or above all of that, and maybe wrapped into all of that. The church is about proclaiming the gospel. And our new bishop, as she lives into her role as a, a leader among pastors and a leader among churches and, and their people, I think will do a good job keeping us focused on that mission. That, that growing the church is about doing things in faith. That, that growing the, the church is not so much uh, about numbers, but, but about miracles and, and stories and helping people to understand the gracious love of God. Whoever is not against us is for us. Every time that, that I see congregations working together on, on various projects, I, I think of that verse. Whoever is not against us is for us. It, it would be so easy for all of the, the Lutheran churches uh, across our, our synod to, to constantly fight and, and try to, to win members from one another. It, it would be easy for the churches across Johnstown uh, of any denomination to constantly fight and try to one-up each other and pull people from, from one congregation to another. But sometimes we just need to remember that one verse, whoever is not for us, or whoever is not against us, it is for us. Even though we as Lutherans put our, our own special flavor on, on being church, I hope we, we can all admit that the, the gospel is preached in all those other churches too. And I'm sure that some of you may spend your, your time throughout the week reading devotions that, that are printed and written by people of other traditions. Maybe you, you tune in to some of the, the other church services available on, on cable access, or, or you listen to podcasts, or, or videos on, on your computer. You, you hear some of those other faith perspectives. It helps you grow. I think we, we can all agree that a good number of the messages that, that we might hear from other faith traditions, other denominations, other churches, other pastors can be just as relevant for us sometimes. So, last week I, I shared during the children's storm sermon the, the story of our, our new puppy and I, I talked about how Puppies are, are not just small adults, and babies are not just small adults. They're, they're children who need nurturing. And Jesus speaks a bit to that again today, too. When, when he says uh, about putting stumbling blocks in front of small ones. Anyone who is not against us is for us. 
anything we can do to clear the path of other people toward hearing and knowing the God that we love so much is doing the work of the gospel. So yeah, Jesus didn't get worked up when, when he saw someone else using his name and healing people. Because he knew. He knew that that, that person who, who may or may not have been healed, whose demons may or may not have been cast out, they, they probably came to know and understand God a little bit more that day. When we do the work of God in our world, whether we, we call ourselves Lutherans or Roman Catholics or Methodists or Presbyterians or, or Episcopalians or people who just love Jesus, we know that God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? May as children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for natural wonders of your creation, for local waterways, forests, and natural areas. Restore forests that are damaged and all waterways and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those who are underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, for all who participate as musicians, readers, acolytes, ushers. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those who we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you.
we're, we're continuing to, to help her, her fill in or uh, get into the, the role and, and find the, the things that, that she's responsible for and, and how to do so. Uh, just a, a note that, that she is here Monday through Thursday, 9 to 1. Uh, Pastor Scott and I are, are still uh, available during our normal office hours or, or outside of those hours. Uh, but, but if you, you do need to, to uh, see Terry, uh, she's here during the, those hours in the morning and into the early afternoon. Uh, I, I just encourage you to, to uh, be reminded that, that there really is so much that, that is involved in being a church secretary that, uh, you know, it, it really is like drinking from a, a fire hose. Uh, so if, if you, you have a, a question that uh, she is not able to answer, she, she's been doing very good about taking it as good of notes as possible um, and passing those along to Pastor Scott or I uh, so that we can figure out how best to, to answer those questions uh, or, or take care of those concerns. Uh, also, this week, uh, our worship PowerPoint for the, the first time was, was put together by uh, a new member of, of the team, Erin Powell, uh, who is the, the daughter of Noel Berkey, who normally uh, attends on, on Saturday evening. Uh, so she is the one moving forward who, who will uh, put together the, the slides that you see in front of you as, as we follow along with the liturgy. Uh, she, she did a, a great job tackling that. Uh, she's also going to, to be responsible for, for sending out the, the weekly email newsletter uh, each week. And, and so uh, she's just about ready to, to take over that responsibility as well. Uh, so all of that uh, sort of training and, and uh, hands-on learning has been going on throughout the week. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Pastor Scott Penn has been in South Carolina on, on vacation. Um, so again, if, if you were expecting something from, from the office this week that, that you didn't get, uh, we, we apologize and just thank you for your patience and, and graciousness. Uh, other things to, to take note of, um, uh, a note that, that our, our new security system uh, with the, the door locks is, is active. Um, if you are scheduling any sort of a event or meeting, um, I think most of the committee chairs receive key fobs to, to be able to open those doors. Uh, but, but it is important and helpful that if you're scheduling an event or meeting, that, that you make sure that event is actually on the schedule. And we're able to, to program the, the doors to be unlocked at, at those particular times. Uh, you know, for example, our, our various uh, AA meetings that, that take place in, in Sandra Hall throughout the week, they, they just, uh, the door is unlocked for them at the, the time they need it and locked again at, at the end of their time period. So if you're scheduling something, uh, again, it just behooves you to, to make sure that, that we know it's happening uh, so that you're not standing out in the cold. Uh, another piece along with that is that uh, there are doorbells uh, at the front door and at the choir room, choir room door. Uh, the, the during the, the week, the, the front doors will be locked. Um, so you're, you're able to ring that doorbell and, and hear your pastor Scott or I are able to, to let you in that way. Again, uh, as Pastor Scott shared last week during the sermon and a bit during the announcements, uh, we're, we're just uh, trying to, to keep track of, of a, a large building that, that has many ways in and uh, making sure that we can help anyone who, who arrives. Uh, other things to, to take note of, uh, especially for our, our uh, younger families tonight, uh, at 6.30, uh, there will be a cookout in the, the back parking lot over by the, the preschool parking or preschool play area. Uh, hamburgers and, and hot dogs and, and chips and drinks. Um, that, that's for any family with, with school-age children coming and enjoy a, a dinner on us and, and some time to, to hang out and, and uh, share what, what more you'd like to see for, for your families in our congregation. Uh, on Tuesday evening at, at 6.30, uh, again for younger families with uh, junior high and high school age youth, uh, we're going to, to be having an informational meeting about the National Youth Gathering coming up 
uh, next summer. Uh, there it will be a week in July in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, it really is a, a great and, and wonderful event. I I personally went to to two of them. Uh, they were a huge part of me feeling my my call toward being a pastor and, and uh, connecting with with my my faith and, and things like that. Uh, so certainly uh, any student who is in eighth through twelfth grade this fall is eligible for that. Um, and if you'd like more information, you can talk to me on the, the way out of the door today. Uh, one other note that, that I was asked to pass along, uh, we, we've been praying for, for Gladys Hopped uh, through, throughout the, the last few weeks. Uh, she's been going through health issues. Uh, she, she was moved into uh, Richland Woods uh, this past week. Uh, towards the middle of the week. So uh, if you'd like to, to send her a, a card or, or anything, well wishes along, along those lines, uh, we can get you a, an address for that as well. Um, I think that is all that, that I was asked to pass along. Again, I, I thank you for your, your graciousness and great getting the, the service started, just uh, doing triple duty today. And, and uh, Are there any other announcements today? Uh, 